What's going on everybody? So first and foremost, I want to thank you all for your continued support. I love y'all. Y'all great people and you should be told this and if your loved ones aren't telling you this and you send them to my live feed and I'll go Gordon Ramsay on them because I promise you I don't lose arguments. Alright, so on that note, ladies and gentlemen, um, I got a few things to say. First and foremost, I am not going to really be too active within the next week. For those who don't know, and I've said this before, I'm studying for my licensure exams for occupational therapy. Occupational therapists, we essentially rehabilitate people or habilitate people to be able to function in everyday life, whether it's a, a child with cerebral palsy or an individual with Alzheimer's or spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injuries, or children with sensory issues. We're all over the map, and it's our job to retrain your bodies in order to be able to uh, engage in your meaningful and uh, purposeful activities and occupations so I'm really excited about that but it's really hard so I've been studying really really hard for that exam and I take it soon so this week I'm not gonna really be too busy on discord I'm not gonna be too busy on twitch you're not really gonna see me too much with that being said um, I'm gonna start a new series how to climb to the top um, I have all these different ideas and different suggestions on how you can improve your gameplay. Now, um, I do want to address something, and that is is that in some of my videos, I always put pro player, pro player. And it's come to my attention that a few people are asking me why I'm putting pro player. The reason why I'm putting pro player is because there's only been one U.S. tournament with uh, the development team, sponsored by the development team, with top streamers. Because, it, just so you know... Although emulators are currently allowed to be used, you're not allowed to use them in tournaments, just so you know that. So when tournaments do start to come out, which you'll eventually see, you're not allowed to use an emulator, you'll be banned, all right? So it was the only uh, U.S. tournament that the development team sponsored. I came in first place. It was literally called the Pro Table. I was a top 10 survivor. I won the Pro Table. I won the accessory. Um, and it was sponsored by the development team and endorsed by the development team and advertised by the development team. So that's why I do say that I'm a pro player. I do not have a pro team right now. I've been training in people. And one of the things that I'm going to say is that as a top player in this game, I challenge you to find another top player in another game that has literally spent hundreds of hours of playing with new people. You're not going to find it. You'll find people who, who beg you for donations and beg you to pay them, but you don't actually have people who say, hey, who wants to play? Who goes in the global chat, adds random people. Uh, but we have over seven or 800 people on Discord now. I play with almost all of them when I have, when, when I have the time to. So I've been developing players. Uh, there's been players that I played with two months ago who, who are garbage, which is okay. That's why they were playing with me. And now I'm seeing them in the top 40. I mean, they're, they're amazing players. So with that being said, there is not another top tier player or rather there is not another video game out there that exists where the number one or at least the top 10 player has spent so much time giving back to the community and really trying to help them grow. You're not going to find it. You know why you're not going to find it? Because the, the community that we have built has been very strong, has been very supportive. And we come out here and we do the best that we can to teach people how to play the game. And more importantly, to make friends, right? Identity 5, one day, who knows when, maybe years and years or months and months, who knows, people are going to want to start playing different games. And so what's important to me is not being the top of the leaderboard. What's important to me is making friends. And that when I go to another game or you go to another game, we have a place where we can say, hey, how's life going? So you're not going to find another place with another top player that spends hundreds of hours playing with new players and trying to help them develop. One minute you get the laughy and lovey and nice little sensitive persuadable, and the next minute you got Gordon Ramsay coming out of me being like, what are you doing? Why are you running that route? Have you not watched any of my videos? <laughs> On that note, I want to thank everybody in the Discord community. We have almost uh, 800 people there. I want to thank all of you. We have built a tremendous community. And the fact that you guys can handle my feedback is tremendous of you guys. Um, so starting now, I'm going to start teaching you how to be a number one player. How I literally got to the top of the top. I want you to get to the top of the top. And I guarantee you it that if I did it, you can do it. I'm going to teach you how to do it. You watch the videos. 
That's all I ask. You don't gotta like them. You don't gotta share them. I don't care about any of that garbage. I'm putting the video out. If you like it, you can watch it. If you think other people will enjoy it, you can help them. If you don't wanna help them, I don't care. As long as you know, I got love for you. I don't expect anything in return. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Welcome to the first episode of How to Climb to the Top. All right, so the question is, how do I improve my gameplay? So I thought about this for a while. This is my first episode. And I was like, what was the most important lesson that I learned when I climbed to the top? Now, sometimes you get those websites where they're like, oh, we got five tips for you to be a pro player. And then you read it and it's like filled with garbage. Like, oh, don't get hit by the hunter. And it's like, oh, <laughs> thank you, genius. I honestly didn't have to watch this video to know that. Thank you. So I'm going to actually show you what I did. And, and, and really one of the best strategies against the number one complaint. Well, the number one complaint can be ping, but the second biggest complaint in this video game is about teammates who die or teammates who don't perform well or whatever. So let me make this very clear. Um, the four people that I'm playing with are really cool people. I just went into global chat again because I'm not an, an elitist and I love to play with new players and meet new players. And I was like, yo, send me a friend request and let's play. And so these people sent me a friend request. And, um, and because of my rank, they were playing against a little bit better hunters than what they may be used to. So we knew that. We knew that. We lost a whole bunch of matches and it was okay. It was cool. We had a really good time and I was able to provide them feedback. But... What happens when you're with a team that dies too quickly or doesn't perform very well, all right? That's the biggest complaint. You have a lot of people out there who do nothing but say that their teams are bad or they don't have good teammates. So in this case, I, that's why I, I put a very big warning that it's not that these players aren't good. It's just that they're a little bit lower tier. They're low, I think they're level tier, uh, they're tier two or three. And because of my tier, they're playing with hunters that are probably around tier four and five. All right. So to answer your question, how I climbed to the top when I first started playing the game, I'm actually going to show you here, is I actually didn't get mad when my teammates would die too fast because I knew that the game was so young, so new, that I had way too much development to blame my teammates right? So it's just too convenient. You have players out there who do nothing but blame their teammates, none whatsoever. And, and, and all they do is they blame their teammates. Their teammates are garbage. We only lose because teammates are garbage and I'm the best player in the world, right? These are usually tier two, tier three players who have this mentality, right? And so I always recommend finding a team, right? But that's not what this video is about. You don't need to watch a video about finding a team. You can come to my Discord. I'm telling you, there are a lot of good players who are always looking for people to play with, all right? But the number one rule is that if you are getting your butt kicked, use that time to polish your tight kite and skills. I, I can't, I cannot tell you how important this rule is. Don't try to escape. Don't try to get through the dungeon. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. If you're the last person alive, that is your turn to take a bad game. Don't even care about winning. This is quick match now, right? And you look at it and say, okay, I'm going to face this hunter. This hunter is going to be beefed up because he killed my whole team. So it's going to be harder, right? To face a clown in the early game is a lot easier than late game. Same thing with Geisha. Her charge, her dash is a lot faster with maximum presence. So... How I climb to the top. I, guys, this is so important. Whenever my team would lose, I would not try to escape. I would go to a certain part of the map and I would ask myself, how long can I last for? That's it. I can't. T that is why a lot of you see my videos and you think that I'm a god at cutting. Let me make this clear. I've been studying for my finals. I'm, uh, not my finals. I already have my master's degree. I've been studying for my licensure exams. When I come out with a video, I'm not playing the game for 20 hours a day and only showing you my best match. I only have maybe two or three hours to play a day, which means that the videos that you see are literally sessions of me kiting on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are normal kites for me. They're nothing too spectacular, right? And that's why I'm going to show you this match. This is how I got to that point. Do not look at it as, oh, my team died, we're going to lose or whatever. Actually, you're going to see me with this cipher machine. I almost finished 
deciphering it and I decide not to because I know that the mechanic is going to die. So why give the hunter the tension? I'd rather just measure my ability. I actually have been so busy and I haven't been able to play a lot that I haven't been able to play a lot on this map. I still got to learn this map because this map is in rank mode and I need to be able to hold my weight as a top player. And this season, I'm not really playing rank mode that much because I'm kind of in retirement right? for the season. I'll be coming back next season as a top tier player. I, I'm still top tier in the, in the server anyways, but still, uh, I, I want to be the best of the best again. And there's a reason why you need to become the best kiter of the best. Now, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I have dealt with people who say, well, I'm just not good at kiting. I'll never be good at cutting. That's false. You just got to practice it. And you got to have confidence in your ability. All right. The biggest thing is just learning not to throw these pallets down prematurely. All right. So this is actually, let me make this very clear. This is actually a top 10 player in the game right now. I'm not going to tell you their identity because, <laughs> no pun intended, because that's just insulting. Um, I, and, and I don't have their permission. I didn't ask them in the lobby, so I'm going to hide. But I promise you, this is a top 10 player. This is a good player. This is a very good hunter. All right? And this is showing you what it's like to actually face a top 10 hunter or a top 10 player, rather. So with that being said, I, I want you guys to kind of redefine yourselves. I don't want you to just always constantly blame your teammates. Now, what I mean by that is that there are plenty of matches you're going to lose because your teammates don't perform well. That's a real thing. And that's so it, it does happen. And if it keeps happening, it can get very annoying. It can get frustrating. But you should use that time wisely to practice your tight chitin. So I actually don't care about surviving. I am not trying to survive this kite. Like, can we make that clear now? I am not trying to survive this kite. I am trying to learn how long I can last with the kite. That's my main priority now. This part of the map, I'm not too familiar with. I'm really not too, too familiar with this part of the map. And I really need to judge each part of the map. I, t I keep telling people with tight kiting, you're not going to get good until you die at least five times in every part of the map. This counts as one time. This is how you learn. This is how you learn the maps. This is how you learn what you can and can't do and how long you can live in, uh, stay in an area before you need to transition. Now, in this area, I'm just going to keep tight cutting. My team already lost, and that's okay, and I don't care about surviving. What I care about is repolishing my tight cutting skills and this ability. Looking at this hunter and realizing that I can get away with this tight kite with this hunter. But if this was clown, it would be a little bit differently with this charge, right? And that's okay because you have to learn the map. So this is me showing you a few things. It's showing you how I use my time wisely. When my team dies, I'm going to try to live as long as I can because that's how you learn how to kite. That is the best way to learn how to kite. When you become a top kiter, and this is a true fact, if it's rank mode against some of the best hunters, if they come after me in the beginning... We're almost guaranteed to win the match as long as the coordinator doesn't mess up the, the rescue. Do you know why? Because I don't go down until there's at least two ciphers left. Sometimes three ciphers. Now, it took me a long time to get to that point. It took me a real long time to get to that point. Probably only as of maybe a month ago where it's been consistent. All right, yesterday, actually. Yesterday in a rank match, there was one match in a two-hour match where I went down in, in like the first 45 seconds. I actually messed up super bad. It wasn't the hunter's skill. It was that I screwed up. So I'm still screwing up as a top player. This is why you need to keep refining and keep practicing different strategies. Don't be afraid to practice different strategies. So the number one rule is that instead of yelling at your teammates and saying they're garbage and they're this and that, use the time wisely. Use that time to practice your skills. It is your time to go one-on-one -on -one against the hunter. And don't worry about surviving. It's quick match. Go into the part of the map that you're not too familiar with or a part of the map where you died a few games ago and you're like, you know what? I want to practice that spot again. This is how you become the number one player. This is how you become a top 10 player. This is how you get to the top 50. You need to practice. If you're the last one alive, practice it. And that's me dying. 
I really hope you guys learn how to do this. You'll get better at cutting. You'll learn the maps. You'll become a solid player. And before you know it, you're going to actually be going in the middle of the map hoping that the hunter goes after you because you'll know. You have so much confidence. You'll know if the hunter goes after you, they're making a big mistake because they're definitely not going to get you until there's at least two ciphers left. And that's an easy win for your team. That means that going forward, because you put so much time and energy into your gameplay, using the bad games to maximize your practice ability, there's a one in four chance that the hunter comes after you in the beginning of the match, which means that once you become good, there's a 25% chance that the match is over before it began. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have more coming out soon. Take care, guys. Much love. Let's change the world.